welcome to the Smartest Quiz 2022, the Hindustan Times National Industry Quiz. Today, we are in the South Zone for yet another knockout tournament. The schools playing today are the CS Academy E Road versus the Sri Kumaran Children's Home, Malasandra. Let's meet the team from CS Academy School E Road. Their captain is Vishwati. Greetings, everyone. My name is Vishwajit Karthikeyan, and I'm a 12th grader at CS Academy. I'm very much into modern United Nations debate and trivia. I'm Pranay Shreya, and uh, I'm a junior for Vishwajit Karthikeyan in grade 11. Quizzing drives me to learn more about what's happening outside the world. My name is Adulin Rajkamal, and I study in 9th grade. Quizzing, model UN, and automobiles are maybe where my passion lies. Thank you, CS Academy. And playing CS Academy today is Sri Kumaran Children's Home, CBSE from Malasandra in Karnataka. Let's start with their captain, Satvik. Uh, good evening. My name is Satvik Arke and I'm studying in grade 12 in Sri Kumaran Children's Home. Myself and my partner Tejas have uh, participated in a lot of quizzes. My other hobbies include designing, cycling, singing Carnatic classical music, reading, of course, um, participating in Model United Nations and so on. I'm Tejas and I'm in 12th grade. Satvik already introduced uh, both of us, so I'd just like to wish the opponents all the very best. Uh, I'm Ruan, I study in grade 10. I'm great. Coding, football, um, and cycle. All that remains for us is to show the grid and get on with the quiz. Let's play Smarticus. Our first player today is our youngest player from CS Academy E Road, Adulan. Which topic would you like to try? Um, I would like to choose the internet, science, and technology. Okay, here is your first question. HTTP is the underlying protocol used by the World Wide Web and defines how images are formatted and transmitted and what actions web servers and browsers should take in response to various commands. If HT stands for hypertext, what do the letters TP stand for? Your time starts now. Transfer protocol. Let's take a look at that answer. And you're absolutely right. Well done. That's two points to you, Adulan. Here is your second question from the same topic. On the internet, URLs make it possible to direct both people and software applications to a variety of information available from a number of different internet protocols. If U stands for uniform, earlier universal, what do the letters R and L stand for? My final answer would be read link. Well thought out, but that doesn't happen to be the answer. So now this is going over to your team member, CS Academy. I will be answering this question, sir. Go ahead. The final answer is resource locator. And you're absolutely right, Vishwati. It is uniform resource locator. Moving over to our youngest member now. Rohan, which topic would you like? I will take lists in mythology. Here's your first question, Rohan. What connects the following eight characters in Hindu mythology? Ashwatthama, Kripacharya, Vibhishana, Parashurama, Vedvyas, Hanuman, Mahabali, and Markandeya. Your 30 seconds. My final answer would be they either carry a mace or an axe. They either carry a mace or an axe. I'm afraid that's not the answer. Passing on to your team, Satvik or Tejas. Uh, okay, my guess would be that uh, they're all characters that find a mention in the Mahabharata. Okay, they're all characters in the Mahabharata. It's possible, but that's not the answer we have. Mm. Passing to CS Academy. Also, Adulin will be answering this question. Sir, my final answer would be they all uh, are characters from Ramayana. Okay, let's reveal the answer to this question, which is a little tough, it looks like. The answer is all these people were considered immortals or Chiranjeevis. Next question coming up on lists in mythology for you, Rohan. 
What starry funda connects the following sages? Marichi or Bhrigu are three Angiras, Pulaha, Kratu, Pulastya, and Vashishta. There are some other variants reported from other sources, but this is the most common list by consensus. Okay, so my final answer is these are the sages in the Saptarishi Mandala. And yes, he's absolutely right. There you see the Big Dipper or the Great Bear, as we know it in Western terminology. In India, it's known as the Saptarishi. Well played, Rohan. You got two points off that. And let's go back to the grid, this time to Praneshwar. Um, I would like to go with forms of government. Here is your first question coming up. Which form of government usually involves rule by a dictator who also controls the lives of the people in that country, allowing no dissent or disagreement? Its name derives from a Latin word meaning a bundle of sticks. something to ponder about and the visual there shows that particular object you can make a guess i'm sure let's hear it from you praneshwar okay i'm going to have to pass you i'm afraid uh, praneshwar uh, anyone else in your team vishwajit or adulan i believe the answer is fascism and yes vishwajit you're absolutely right it is fascism that particular object was called the fasces the bundle of sticks with an axe in the middle of it. It used to be carried in ancient Rome by a group of people called the lictors, who were the bodyguards to magistrates, imperial magistrates. Here is your second question, Praneshwar. What seven letter word denotes a place where there are no laws? It was first used in the English language to mean an absence of government. Is it anarchy? I could see you counting the letters off in your and was that seven letters? I believe it's seven. It is anarchy. Ark, of course, meaning archon means government and anarchy means absence of government or complete lawlessness. Okay. Choices of topics rather moving to our other team today, which is Sri Kumaran. This time their captain, Satvik. Um, I would like to pick Tamil literature. Here is your first question, Satvik. This is the statue of Thiruvalluvar in Kanyakumari. He is a writer of which classic work in Tamil? The height of the statue is 133 feet and it is symbolic of the 133 chapters into which the book is divided. Tirukkural. Tirukkural, that clock didn't have been started also and of course he's right, it is Tirukkural. Well done, two points to you. Here is your second question, Satvik. Who authored the famous Tamil historical fiction novel upon which this movie is based? Kalki Krishnamurti. Kalki Krishnamurti and again bang on, forget the timer and you're absolutely right, yes, the movie being Kunni and Selvan, of which the first, first part was released this year. Moving back now to CS Academy Erode and their captain Vishwajit. Which topic would you like Vishwajit? Mammals please. Let's take a look at the first question on mammals for Vishwajit. Despite being able to run at up to 40 kilometers per hour, which animal is the only mammal on earth that cannot jump? Something to think about. I think the answer is the elephant. And yes, it is an elephant, Vishwajit. You're absolutely right. There you go. Next question coming up. A physiological adaptation of the hyoid bone apparatus allows lions and tigers to do what often terrifying thing the domestic cats cannot. Now, can I have an explanation of what the hyoid bone apparatus is? No, oh, I can't tell you what the hyoid bone is. And that's for you to figure out because the whole point of the question rests there. Okay, your time is run out and let's have your answer. Is it to climb trees? Is it to climb trees? I'm afraid not. Cats can climb trees. Uh, passing on to your team, Adulan or Praneshwar. Uh, Vishwajit, whom do you want to pick for answering this question? I'd like to pick Praneshwar. Praneshwar, you have been picked to answer this question. Go um, ahead. Is it the signature road? And let me give you a signature answer and say absolutely right. Well done. It is a road. By the way, the hyoid bone is the one here in the neck here. It's a floating bone. That's responsible for the big roar 
of lions and tigers. And moving on to our final specialist topic. Tejas, which topic would you like? Uh, Bollywood bodies, movies. Here's your first question, Tejas. Possibly the most iconic villain on screen, an Indian screen, who played the role of the dark white Gabbar Singh in the 1975 blockbuster Shole? seen the film, I'm not sure about the actor. I'm going to have to hurry you up. Not sure. Who would you like to uh, answer yourself or Rohan? Uh, I'll answer this. It's Amjad Khan. Okay, and that is the right answer. Yes, both of you had that. Next question coming up to you. What is the name of this screen villain portrayed by Amrish Puri in the 1987 film Mr. India, much given to talking about himself in the third person? Mogambo. Mogambo says Tejas and Mogambo Kushwa. Absolutely right. Quizma said we Kushwa. That is Amrish Puri playing Mogambo. Well done. That's two points to you. So all of you have had a shot at an individual play. Okay. We'll now move on to the team play. But before that, let's take a look at the scores. At the end of the specialist round, the scores are CS Academy on 9 and Sri Kumaran also on 9. Nothing could be closer than this. Let's move on back to the grid. In this part of the game, teams can play as teams. You're allowed to discuss the question and answer amongst yourselves. CS Academy, Captain Vishwajit, which of the two topics he would like to try? Is it closely watched trains or Nobel Prizes? Yes, sir. We we'll like to go with that. Okay, and here is your first question. This is the route of arguably the most storied train journey in the world, which ran from Paris to Istanbul at its peak. We probably know it best through a murder mystery that has been filmed at least twice in 1974 and 2017. Give the two word name of the train that has been blanked out. Second word is a very common word used to describe fast trains. The first word denotes the Eastern connection. Aish, I think the answer is the Orient Express. Uh, do you agree? Both of you. Agree, I go with this one. Yeah, I think I can go with the Orient Express. I have no idea about it. Okay, sure. Um, we'd like for our final answer to be the Orient Express. What do you know about it being a murder mystery? Any idea? I believe there's a movie uh, written about the murder on the Orient Express, but I haven't watched that yet, so I'm not sure, sir. So they even gave me the name of the novel, The Murder yes, on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. And yes, you're right, it is The Orient Express. That is two points to you. Here is your next question. Train number 12860 of the Indian Railways from Kolkata to Mumbai is one of the few trains in the world to be named after a Nobel Prize winning work of 1913. What is it called? It's named after a Nobel Prize winning work. The value of the answer. Could it be the Raman effect or something? Yeah, even I was thinking about that. When was TV Raman's name? I'm not sure if it is 1930. I think we'll go with that answer, sir. A final answer would be the Raman Express. The Raman Express is a very good try. Yes, C.V. Raman did win the Nobel Prize, but that is not the answer. Here is the question moves over to uh, Sri Kumaran. Uh, I'll answer this. Uh, since this is running from Kolkata, I believe this has to do with Tagore's Nobel Prize. So this must be called the Geetanjali Express, if I'm not wrong. Okay, I have nothing further by way of explanation to add to what Satvik has said. And this is the Geetanjali Express, which you can see here. Okay, well done. That is a good steal by Sri Kumaran. And back to the grid. And for the final specialist topic to Sri Kumaran themselves, which happens to be Nobel Prizes, but connected with the subject being business. Okay, the Nobel Peace Prize for the year 2006 was awarded jointly to Muhammad Yunus and the organization that he created, the Grameen Bank, for their efforts to create economic and social development from below. Which cricket playing Asian country does Mohammed Yunus belong to? Rohan, can you answer that? Uh, Bangladesh. You can discuss amongst yourselves and then I'll ask you for your final answer. Uh, you can give us Bangladesh. The final answer is Bangladesh. Your final answer is Bangladesh. You didn't need too much of time on that. 
And yes, you're absolutely right. Mohammed Yunus belongs to Bangladesh. Well done. Here is your next question. Which economist of Indian origin, seen in the left in this image, shared the 2019 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences with Esther Duflo and Michael Kramer for their experimental approach to alleviating global poverty? Uh, Amitit Banerjee. Is that your final answer? Yeah, that will be your final answer. Okay, that timer didn't even go off there when Satvik said Abhijit Banerjee. And yes, you're absolutely right. It is Abhijit Banerjee. And Esther Duflo happens to be his wife as well. So one of those rare situations like the Curie's uh, husband and uh, wife uh, winning Nobel Prizes. And great ad by Amul here, Nobel Abhijit Gaya. Well answered there, Sri Kumaran. Moving on back to the grid, our last two sets of questions. I'm going to ask CS Academy, which mystery box would you like to choose? As we went for tails with the coin toss, we'd go for mystery box two now. Okay, that's an argument in itself. Okay, fine. Well done. <laughs> I won't dispute that. Here is your first question. Seville, tangerine, mandarin and jaffa are types of which fruit? In India, the best known varieties come from Nagpur and Darjeeling. Nagpur is famous for our industry. It's, it's citrus. Citrus fruits. Citrus. Uh, do you agree? Both of so our final answer would be citrus fruits. I want a specific fruit, I have to tell you that. Oh. It's orange. Orange, orange, orange is okay. with citrus fruit. Yes? Uh, final answer is orange. Your final answer is orange. And yes, you're absolutely right. Here is your second question from that mystery box. Which of the following parts of the human eye that commonly sees transplants in patients has no blood vessels? Retina, cornea, iris, or sclera? There are four choices there. You can pick one. I think the answer is cornea because uh, I haven't heard of any other thing being transplanted much. It's, yet, it's either retina or cornea. Cornea, I think, is the outermost yeah. part. So it's less likely to have a blood vessel. Not the retina. Retina has blood vessels. Cornea, I think. Are you sure? Okay, your bio sure student sure name is I'm pretty sure it's cornea. Okay, sir. Our final answer would be cornea. Your final answer is a cornea. And let me tell you that as an ophthalmologist, I would agree with you. Yes, the cornea has no blood vessels which is why it works very well as transplants because a lot of the antigens and antibodies are carried by blood vessels. There are no anti, no rejections happening or not many. So that's why corneal transplants happen to be one of the most successful parts of the body to be transplanted. Well done. That's another two points for you. And here is your final question. Helping Brazil beat Sweden 5-2 in 1958, who at 17 years old is the youngest person to play and win in a FIFA Football World Cup final? I didn't even know the answer to this one. Brazil beat Sweden. I'm quite weak in sports, I must confess. Could it be Pele? Okay, sir. Uh, Pele would be my final answer. Pele would be your final answer. Are you absolutely sure? Or? Uh, we are not absolutely sure. We are going with that guess. And I will also agree as well. Well done. That is the final two points for you. It was a bit of a uh, bit of tension there for you. I think you're trying to figure out what it is, but well played. It is Pele. And now we move on to the final set of three questions to Sri Kumaran. Mystery box one. In this cover of the broken ear, on which river is Tintin traveling? It is the largest river in the world by the volume of water it discharges. Uh, guys, I think this is the Amazon River, right? Can we go with that? Yeah. Ron, do you have any? what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. I have read this book and I'm about 90% sure that it is the Amazon. I would like to go with the Amazon. It is the Amazon River. Well done. Here is your second question, Sri Kumaran. In the 1600s, which famous astronomer, physicist, and engineer discovered the moons Europa, Io, Callisto, and Ganymede that orbit Jupiter? They are also collectively named after him. This is Galileo. Moons, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So our, our answer would be Galileo Galilei. And yes, you're absolutely right. These are the Galilean moons of Jupiter. 
they happen to be one of the first things discovered by the telescope. And the interesting thing is because they were found to be orbiting Jupiter, it broke the idea that everything orbited around the Earth. So that geocentric idea of the universe was broken when it was seen that there were other bodies orbiting around certain other planets as well. Good two points to you. And your final question coming up of this quiz. Romanian athlete Nadia Comaneci stunned the world at the 1976 Olympic Games in Montreal by being the first to accomplish what feat of perfection? Uh, she scored a perfect 10 in gymnastics. Uh, I think that's it as well. I've uh, heard a name in relation to some record, but I can't remember. Yeah, it's a gymnastics bit. Yeah, we should go with perfect. We'll go with that. Yeah, so she scored a perfect ten from all the judges in uh, gymnastics. Okay, she scored a perfect ten. Do you, any of you remember what the scoreboard showed at that point in time? Let's show you the picture, the famous photograph of Nadia standing next to that scoreboard. You can see it shows 1.00, and the reason is the people who made the scoreboard never expected that someone would score a perfect 10, maximum being 9.99. .99. So the number 10 was not possible to show. They just put it as 100, hoping that people would figure out that it was a perfect 10. After that, of course, scoreboards have changed. So let's take a look at what happened to those scores in this nail biter of the quiz. At the end of that quiz, with a brilliant performance, CS Academy, great answering you guys. You scored 17 points, but two points ahead and winning this quiz with 19 points is Sri Kumaran Children's Home from Karnataka, Malasandra. Well done to both teams, I would say. You've played very, very well and I'm sure you're going to go flying high in your future quizzes. I have no doubts about that. We will see you in the quarterfinals of Smarticus 2022. Till then, goodbye.